Hello and welcome to the Vokta Gaming YouTube channel. I am your host, Mythology's very own vocal terrorist, Jesse Rain. And we're here with game number two from the DreamHack Open Stockholm group stages between this player, our Orange Protoss, here for Western Wolves. He is Starnan! And opposing him... From MYI, the WCS caster, Penguin! Slight apologies from video number one, game number one of this best of three series. I said the DH Open replay pack was available from the wrong website. It is, of course, available from sc2wins.net or .com, something like that, but Google sc 2 win that is what you're after. They are a fantastic replay website. I've been scouring so many replay websites looking for some fun stuff to cast for you guys in the road to epic land. And I'm just going to be churning out some videos over the next couple of days hoping to get some of my mythology players in to help me with a bit of the analysis because that's what we really want. We want to relearn the game and, uh, and we want to have fun while we do it. So, of course, in game number one, we saw Penguin go for the one base aggression against Starnan that did not pay off for him. He got a small amount of early damage done, but nothing compared to what Starnan did in return with the Phoenixes, with the Void Ray. As it is, again, Penguin going for a pull before expansion. When you see Protoss doing these one gate expands, it always worries you as a Zerg. It's something I've definitely come across a lot as a Protoss player when I'm receiving training from some of my own players um, because they do like to try and help me get better at the game on the occasions that I play it. They often suggest these one gate expands in PvZ just because you make the Zerg so uncertain of his next move. So as it is, we can see Penguin is going to be looking early on for any expansion play from Starnan. As it is, Starnan is getting two gases down quite quickly. So uh, he'll be going into at least a little bit of tech. At the very least, we'll be seeing Mothership Core and I imagine a second gate before the expand. But it's going to depend on what Penguin's doing as well. Penguin himself, this time, expanding. Not going for that one base Roach Warren, as we can see. Has not taken a single of his Vestian Geysers yet. First Extractor going down right at this second. Starnan going to scout with the initial Zealot. And does have a pylon at the front of his ramp if he needs to wall off for any reason. Uh, just in case Penguin is, of course, going for some crazy, crazy Zergling openings. As it is, though, both players now... I feel much more standard after that kind of insane game one. I could see what Penguin was going for. It was very enjoyable. Did not work out for him at all. Starnan wanting to expand. Penguin here, of course, absolutely ready and waiting for it. He has the money. Will he do it? There we go. He is going to drop it down. There's no way he can force that Overlord away. So you have to drop it down. Starnan. And that means Penguin knows about it. But Starnan in return knows the exact timing of Penguin's base here. Uh, drone having to help out this Queen. But the Drone does get picked off. So the Zealot doing everything it can. Can't kill the Queen. But it kills the Drone. It's going to force a tiny bit of lost mining time. And of course, the most important thing. It scouts this base. Is he even going to escape? That one Zealot. The Commando Zealot. Escaping with his life at this point. May even circle round to check and to see if this third's being taken instead of this one. It's uh, it's often a very tough choice for Zerg sometimes. A lot of players want to go down here, but it can be incredibly isolated. But of course, this is even further, so still very much the standard base here. We're going to see some Zerglings come down. Try and clear the Zealot if the Zealot is there. And as it is, Penguin looking to me to go for a third base fairly soon. We do have the layer tech going down. Starnan, meanwhile, Stargate. Starnan, Stargate. It fits. This time, no initial Void Ray. He's not worried about any pressure coming out of Penguin. So he can go straight for these Phoenixes. But of course, Penguin is going to be better defended this time. At least one will hope. We already have the Hydra Den started, so absolutely... Going to start to prepare for that Stargate play. I don't believe he's uh, he knows about that. No, he, d he doesn't know it's there, but he guesses. The Overlord, of course, dropping creep on the third base instead of trying to scout that main and being picked off. 
Warloff going down for Starnan. Uh, two gates to the forge. The forge is down for the Warloff. Not so far being used for upgrades. So it says to me that Starnan is going to be heavily focusing on this Stargate for quite a while to come. We are going to see more gateways coming down, obviously. But right now, his focus, his gas is very much in the Stargate production rather than in trying to get ready to upgrade his ground units. These Zerglings see a couple of buildings, but it's the standard wall off. That's not going to tell Penguin anything other than Starnan is walling off. Penguin now drops his third base, which at the 8 minute mark, just shy of the 8 minute mark, is very, well not very late, but it's a little bit later than you'd like. Definitely paying for being safe, uh, spending the time to get the Hydra down up. Take a quick look in terms of workers, see how we're very, very even there, 42 to 44, so Penguin is actually playing incredibly safe, and that could come back to bite him in the later stages of this game, when he needs that economy, if he's unable to get it going, or if Stardown can do something with these Phoenixes, he's going to find himself behind very, very quickly, and that is going to be a problem for the NYI Zerg player. Double Extractors going down here. Very much just gearing up this third base. The Phoenixes know about it. They're going to come into this second, but look at this. The Hydra's already ready, so they're going to force the Phoenixes away incredibly quickly. And no kills on either side. Oh, sorry, one kill for that Phoenix. They must uh, they must have quickly killed that drone. Uh, surprised he hasn't gone and cleared out this uh, with either some Stalkers. It doesn't take some stalk uh, that many Stalkers, or even just one Phoenix. So it looks like that's what he's going to do now. One Phoenix... Now that his opponent knows, now that Penguin knows there's Phoenixes there, he can afford to do this. And uh, the Phoenixes up here are also going to try and clear some Overlords. This is frustrating for Penguin. That's all it is. This isn't going to set you back too hard, but it's frustrating. It's two Supply Blocks. He's going to hit another one when he loses this Overlord. But most importantly, it means he will no longer have map presence. It means he can't float Overlords up here checking for things flying in because he's just going to lose them. He can't check for third bases. Because he's just going to lose them. He can't keep a presence on this map. Right now, Penguin is confined to his base unless he wants to put together an attack. So, we're just going to take some quick stock of what's going on. Starland adding a few more gateways. Of course, a Robo Facility is done. Robotics Bay also going down. Phoenix is trying to come in for some more harassment, but this Hydra's here waiting for them. Uh, the Spire is done. Flyer attacks level 1 on the way, and we are seeing Corruptors. So, Penguin going Corruptors rather than Muto, it'll be interesting for me to see how this works out, because I remember a time when Corruptors did not work against Phoenixes. They, they literally just did not work against Phoenixes. So, we will see if things have changed since the last time I was heavily involved in commentary. This is fun, I've missed this, and I think maybe this is what I missed about StarCraft. So, expect to see a lot more of this kind of thing coming out of me in the future. I'm just doing these two for today. But I have got a ton of replays from way back in the DreamHack Open from Stockholm. And it's going to be a lot of fun. I've got all the group stages. I've got all the round of 16, the round of 8, the finals, all that stuff. Uh, I'm not necessarily going to do every replay. I'm just going to do what looks fun for me. Uh, that's what this is about. We're not, we're not here to promote the YouTube channel. We're not here to get views. We're here so I can remember how to cast in time for Epic Land. Now... In the slight lull we have, while these two players are building up their forces, fourth base going down for Penguin, uh, I just want to talk quickly about Epic Lan. Uh, it is, of course, the 12th Epic Lan, therefore known as Epic 12, and is being held in Kettering, uh, starting on February the 14th, that is a Friday. Uh, these Phoenixes, man, continuing to do some damage here, picking off another Queen. The Hydra's totally out of position to deal with this. So we're going to see a few more Overlords go down as well. The Hydras finally get back, but again, Penguin Supply Blocks. Very, very frustrating. Now it's time for the Muta Flocks. Uh, Corruptors are just behind them to help out. But yes, uh, you definitely want to get signed up. If you are not signed up for that, there's StarCraft 2, there's League of Legends, there's a whole bunch of stuff. And of course, just Google search for Epic LAN, and it should be the first result for you. These Muta's doing a lot of damage now. The Phoenix is coming back to help, but it's going to be very, very slow, and I'm not sure he's got enough here. Penguin, continue to do damage, trying to take down this Stargate, which I like, I like the focus there. Gonna have to be careful about the Phoenixes though. Corruptors getting in front, doing some damage to them. And right now, ah, this is nice. Nice boxing there, the Muta's taking down the Stargate, the Corruptors trying to fight the Phoenixes. 
And now we have a lot of ground forces coming up to help, but I don't know what help they are. The only thing he has is if he wants to throw down the photon overcharge, but if he does that, he confines his defense to one base and the meters can just fly off elsewhere. So, nice work by Penguin. I'm going to take a quick look if I remember my heart keys. Not that many workers killed, but uh, he definitely did well in taking down that Stargate, slowing the production of Star Nan. So he's back down to just the one Stargate. And of course, his ground army, virtually useless. I mean, the sentries do nothing against muters. The Colossus do nothing against muters. The Zealots do nothing against muters. This is looking good from Penguin so far. I like it. He's going to come into this third base. There's a few cannons there. The Phoenixes are ready and waiting. The muters do not want to engage head on. The Corruptors want to get there. But of course, the Stalkers help against the Corruptors. So Penguin unable to hit a head on engagement at this point. Uh, observers out on the map for Star Nine. Also, uh, one Zealot holding this Zell Naga Watchtower will go down. Or not, because he's busy flying away from those Phoenixes. And oh my word, the Phoenix is getting in a nice chunk of damage there. Uh, a few of these meters now getting low health. It's not the biggest thing, but you will take anything you can get. A couple of these Phoenixes, though, incredibly hurt. So Star Nine is going to have to be cautious with them. You don't want to start losing units like that anytime soon. Secondary Spire going down. The first one's still up, so it's simply for double upgrades. Should be finishing around the time that Plus One Flyer Carapace is done. Maybe slightly before. And then 2-2 two, two will begin as fast as possible. Nice transfuse there. Just healing up those injured muters and corruptors. Fifth base coming down for Penguin. We are at the 16 and a half minute mark in this game. And... Well, Starnan is looking like he's in a little bit of trouble here, in, just in terms of push out. For me, Starnan is just building up everything he needs at this point. The Anion Pulse Crystals will really help the Phoenixes dominate the air. But what he has to do is buy himself some time, and this is the way to do it. Use that ground army. It is, of course, only on 1-1, one, one, but it's more than enough at this point. The Muters are miles out of position. They're fighting the Phoenixes, which is not always going well for them. Nice moves there, though. Catching a lot of Phoenixes off guard. He is going to lose this base, however. Stalkers and Sentries moving back to try and help defend this base. Because the last thing you want to do is lose everything to these meters. And again, more and more Phoenixes going down here. We are down to just seven Phoenixes. And there is an awful lot of meters and Corruptors here to help fight them. Nice chunk of Stalkers there with the 1-1 one, one will be helpful. But again, the Muters can just outmaneuver them. The Corruptors will eventually take down these Colossus as well, should they so choose. So, Penguin lost one base, but he's still got this base over on the left-hand side of the map. So, that is not too worrying. As we can see, he has a large mineral bank. It's mostly this gas that's going to start to worry him if these extractors are going to go down, if he's not able to replace this base particularly soon. But the two extractors over here will finish up, and his gas will soon start to skyrocket once more. Now, we have the plus two air weapons coming out for Star Nun. Star Nun not even remotely interested in that air armor. Meanwhile, well, we have the double spire, but we don't have the gas for plus two, plus two. And that's an oversight on Penguin's part. That's going to be a real problem for him. He wants that plus two, plus two, and he wants it as fast as possible. Protoss Shields level one is going to be done. Air weapons level two is going to be finished. And at plus two, Carapace is just starting. Plus two attack a long way away still. So as we head towards the 20 minute mark in this game, Starnan is starting to essentially regain a foothold here. The Anion Pulse Crystals is done and with that, with that plus two attack also finishing, he's going to be able to start to really decimate this air army of Penguin. And then with Penguin, with no extra upgrades, with only the 1-1, one, one, he could find himself losing this air army very, very quickly. There's a lot of stalkers there as well. And of course, the Stalkers on 1-1-1 one, one, one at this point. It's mostly the plus one attack that interests Star Nan at this point. And this base dies. Absolutely instantly. Cancel is forced. Penguin trying to trade one for one. The Muters focusing down that Nexus, forcing the Cancel, and now going to try and escape. The Corruptors fighting on with those Phoenixes, but the Phoenixes outrange them. The Anion Pulse Crystals with that plus two range. They have insane range at this point. That is a seven range attack. That is simply insane. We take a look here. Their range is six. One extra range. They can fire while moving. If your control is good enough, these phoenixes never take another hit again. Simple as that. And look at this. A nice little just harass here of zealots is going to kill this base if Penguin doesn't 
do something. He's trying to retake this base, but he's getting hemmed in. He's not mining gas now uh, from these either of those bases. Now, finally, it looks like the Zerg, uh, the Zerg army will take down these zealots, so that hatchery will not fall. But some nice damage now done there by Penguin, and he is losing so many muters to this Phoenix harassment. The Phoenixes are getting so much mileage in this game. And Starnam must be loving it now. The last of the Corruptors in this army will fall. And that Muta Flock simply isn't big enough to even go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the Phoenixes. And with the Ground Army moving across, Penguin drops out the GG. Well played. Starnam incredibly effective in those two games. That's all we have time for today. Thank you very much for watching. And I'll see you in the future as we gear up for Epic 12.